Um, I wonder if you've ever been caught between a rock and a hard place. I remember when I was in grade seven, I hit the pinnacle of my acting career. Uh, and I got chosen in our school musical for the role of Aladdin. And I thought, this is it. I have, I have, well, actually, I thought this is just the next step on my acting career. Turns out it was probably the last step. But I'm, I'm Aladdin in the musical. I've got this voice of an angel just kind of before it all cracked and fell apart <laughs> once I hit like 12. And, and I remember it was, this, it was a big deal show, hey, and, and I, was, I was stoked about it. I was like, I'm, I'm really going to come out of the, you know, out of primary school. You have like, you know, you don't really have that many big productions. This was the first major production I was to be involved in. And I was so excited about it. And there was this one moment in the evening. Everything was going so well. I'd done the whole, a whole new world. We, we blasted that out. We, Jasmine and I were on the magic carpet and, and it was all, it had happened. It was fantastic. And, and there was this moment where, where, which called for a quick costume change uh, where the smoke machine went on. I was to run off, get changed out of my beggar's clothes and into, you know, the Prince, uh, Prince Ali Fabulous, he, I can't actually remember the words, Ali Ababa. Anyway, and uh, I, was, I, was, I, I, would, I, I started off the stage and it was really quick. It was like, you've got like 15 seconds to do this. And as I started going, I could see there was one of the year 12 girls was waiting just off stage with my, my stuff ready to go. And, and as I was exiting, I started to like perform the change a little early, just so that I would have time. And, and to my horror, as I was running off, I realized that the belt I had on, which was just fabric, the knot was too tight. And I couldn't undo the knot. So I'm running and I'm trying to undo the knot and, and nothing's happening. It's just, it's, it's stuck. And I realized in that moment, I was, I was in a rock and a hard place. I had a decision to make. Do I fiddle with this knot and potentially throw the whole show out, ruin the evening, by missing my cue. Imagine that. It's like, here he is, and then 15 seconds of silence. Or do I risk it all and try just take my belt off over my pants? Because it wasn't attached to my pants. It was just, you know, for decoration. And I thought, I'm going to make a tough call here. I'm going to take my belt over my pants. And as I ran off the stage towards this poor year 12 girl who was ready to change me, and I just took it down, my pants stayed with my belt. And while I was still three quarters of the way off the platform, I just showed the whole audience my butt in undies. <laughs> and which I, could, there were, I can still remember to this day, there were these undies with a cyclist on them and, and it's just burnt into my memory. And, and I remember realizing what I had done and, and seeing the look of horror on the year 12 girl's face and hearing a, an eruption of laughter behind me. And what made this worse was that it was a quick costume change and then I had to come out and face everyone again. I was caught between a rock and a hard place. I had a hard decision that I had to make and maybe I chose the wrong one, but it's a great story. You know, in life, so many times we're faced with these rock and a hard place kind of decisions, hey, where it can kind of seem like both options are difficult. Has anyone, has anyone ever been in a position like that? Like, it, it's like every, each option is actually difficult. It's choose this or choose that. And I think someone who sees it so, who we can see it so clearly in in Scripture is Paul. Paul who goes on to live an incredible life. Paul, who, because of him, essentially, he's a big part of the reason that we are here today, right? He was one of the fathers of the church. He was kind of had this crazy story where Jesus appears to him on the road to somewhere. He gets blinded for three days. A guy comes and prays for him. It's like they says, like, scales fall off his eyes, and all of a sudden, God changes his name from Saul to Paul, just so it wasn't too confusing. Well, actually, probably more confusing, because now it's really similar. It's like, I thought you were Paul. But I thought you were Saul, but no, Paul. And, and has this radical encounter with God where he then goes on and he's preaching to people. He's preaching to people that aren't Jews for one of the first times. He's actually going out into places where the gospel hadn't been preached before. He has an incredible life. He lives an incredible legacy. I don't know, does anyone like here want to have a life like that where you actually live a life that makes a difference? 
And I think it can be easy to look at Paul and say, yeah, I want that kind of life. But it's interesting when we read about him, what he writes in 2 Corinthians, because he made a massive difference, but he had to choose a more difficult path. And we read about it in 2 Corinthians 11, 20 to 30, 21 to 30. Uh, and, and I love this because it's kind of Paul responding to some people. And, and essentially what he's saying is, you guys think you've got a right to brag. If anyone can brag, I can brag, right? It's kind of like, you think you're humble? Look how humble I am. Like, he's like, I'm better at bragging than you are. And, or he's got, I've got more to brag about than you do. And it goes on. Uh, in, and it says, whatever anyone else dares to boast about, and, and then I love he clarifies, I'm speaking as a fool. Okay, so what Paul's doing here is he's making a point. He's not seriously bragging and boasting about these things. He's just saying, if I wanted to, I could. And he said, if anyone dares to boast about, I'm being a fool, I also dare to boast about. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they Abraham's descendants? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I am out of my mind to talk like this. I am more. I have worked much harder. And it's like up until this point, it's like, yeah, you know what? Like he's got a fair bit to brag about here. But this is where he goes from like good flexing to kind of like a bit of a weird flex, Paul. Okay. And, And he goes on and he's like, I have been in prison more frequently. I have been flogged more severely. I have been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one, which I'm assuming is 39. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent the night and day in open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers. I have been in danger from bandits. I've been in danger from my fellow Jews. I've been in danger from the Gentiles. I've been in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger in danger at sea, in danger from false believers. I have labored and toiled. I have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst. I've gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face the daily pressure of my concern for all the churches. Who, uh, who is weak and, and, and I do not feel weak? Who is led into sin and I do not feel inwardly burnt? He's basically saying, I feel the pain of when people miss what God is calling them to. And then he says, and and up until it's like weird, it's a weird flex, right? Like, who's flexing about how many times they've been in prison, how many times they've been shipwrecked? It's like, that's not the kind of thing that you boast about, man. Like, you know, when someone's telling you a story and you're like, I I don't think you understand that that's not something to brag about. And then it says, if I must boast, I will boast in the things that show my weakness. And I think what we see here is, is Paul, who has this life that it's like, we all want it. We all want to live a life that makes a difference, right? We all want to live a life that makes this world a better place. We all want to live the kind of life that is not just about me. It actually impacts. I think deep in our heart, God has put this thing that I, 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 deep in my core, I want to be a part of something that's bigger than me. And Paul is caught in the same thing, which is the choice between am I going to choose calling or am I going to choose comfort? Am I going to choose to live called or am I going to live a comfortable life? It's almost like these are the two rocks because to choose comfort and to choose calling, it's like what will we do? I think that, you know, these things, we we have to choose. You can, I've learned that you can probably live a called life or you can live a comfortable life but you probably can't live both. It's a rock and a hard place. What are you going to choose? Do you want to choose to live a life that is a life to the full, a life that God's called you to, a life that puts others first, a life that leaves a legacy, or do you want to choose to live a life that's comfortable? And I think this could be the greatest danger to our generation is to choose a life of comfort over a life of calling. So much our culture hammers us to do what feels good, to do what we feel like, to do the things that we're comfortable with. If it, if it makes you uncomfortable, then, then don't worry about it. Sometimes even in church, we use that language, if you're comfortable to. But I actually think that the biggest danger we face is to choose a life of comfort over a life of calling. So the question becomes, What are you going to choose? Are you going to choose calling? What God has put in front of you? 
a life that makes a difference, or are you going to choose what's comfortable? And tonight, I just want to share a few thoughts with us quickly about what should we, some things we need to consider while we're making this decision. Are we ready? Are we in? This might be a little bit challenging this evening, okay? This, this isn't a message of like, everything is good, everything is awesome. It's not that message. It's, man, you have got a rock and a hard place decision to make, and it starts today. So things to consider. The first thing to consider is that comfort isn't always comfortable. Choosing comfort won't always make you comfortable. Sometimes it can seem like this thing is just uh, so much easier, but it's amazing how many times choosing the comfortable thing, the easy thing, actually leads to pain further on. It says in Proverbs 14, 12, there is a way which seems right to a man and appears, and I want you to notice this, straight before him, but its end is the way of death. It's like, whoa, okay, escalated quickly. But I think what it's trying to, the point it's trying to make that is sometimes this way which seems easy, which so often is straight in front of us. It's what's right here. It's what we know. It's what we're comfortable with. Sometimes it can look so appealing and we think this is taking me where I want it to take me, but it actually ends up in a place that we don't want to be. It might be more comfortable to avoid that tough conversation with a friend, but actually it's going to cause pain later on. It might be more comfortable to hold on to unforgiveness and just what you know, but in the end it's going to cause destruction. And it's, it's like we think we know where it's heading, and, and I was talking to someone about it this week, and they used the, the thought of, who here has seen Finding Nemo? Yeah, what a movie. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm down with that. And, and you know when Dory's like, oh, hey, little fella, and it turns out it's a whale? Like, it's like, because it's just a long way away. I think it's kind of like, sometimes it's like, we think we know what we're looking at. We think we know the path that we're choosing. But actually, if we don't listen to, and if we don't choose calling, we're actually going to end up in a place of pain. We're going to end up with a life that doesn't make a difference. Proverbs 14, if I can read it in the, the Passion Translation, and puts it like this. And, and can I just say, this, is, this one's a bit heavy, okay? This oof, hits, it, it hits close to home. You can rationalize it all you want and justify the path of error you have chosen, but you'll find out in the end that you took the road to, to, to destruction. Man, how many times have I justified and rationalized decisions that I'm making to try and make it seem like I actually am, I'm, I'm headed in a good direction when I very well know that that's not what God's calling me to? when I very well know that God is calling me to something bigger, that God is calling me to something greater. How many times have I rationalized and justified the path that is straight in front of me, the path that is easy, the path that is known, the path that is comfortable? It's been well said, John, uh, John, Jim, Rohn, Jim, Jim Rohn said, everyone must choose one of two pains, the pain of, dis uh, the pain of discipline, or the pain of regret? What are we going to choose? Are we going to choose the hard choice now? Are we going to choose calling now? Or are we going to choose comfort now? But remember, comfort isn't always comfortable. It might seem comfortable, but it doesn't always lead there. The, th the second thing we need to consider is that comfort stunts growth, where calling creates character. You'll never become who you were called to be if you always choose what's comfortable, if you always choose what you know, if you always choose what you understand, you will never become the person that God is calling you to be. And I think that Paul, uh, uh, sorry, P.T. Barnum once said, comfort is the enemy of progress. If you want to go somewhere, the enemy of that is just to stay comfortable, to stay in your comfort zone, to stay with what I know. It's the enemy of growth. 2 Corinthians, uh, Paul puts it like this. Therefore, in order to keep me from being conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord 
to take it away from me. Can anyone relate to that? Have you ever prayed, God, can you just take that away? <laughs> like, can we be honest? Sometimes it seems like, God, there's like this big issue, and if you would remove it, my life would be much simpler. Has anyone ever felt like that? Like, it would be easier. I would probably be able to achieve more, more better what you've called me to. If you would just move that thing, life would be a whole lot easier. I would feel a whole lot more comfortable and more confident without that. It could be something about you. It could be, you know, something that you're not strong in or something that you're not confident about. It might be something that's happened to you. It might be something that you struggle with. And we can feel like, God, if you would just take that away, then I could live the kind of life that you want me to live. If you would just get rid of that, everything would be so much better. Has anyone ever felt like that before? God, could you just get rid of that thing? And it goes on in verse 9, it says, but, but he said to me, but, but Jesus said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. My power is brought to completion in your weakness. Where I am weak, then I'm actually strong. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. See, Paul's recognizing here that there's some things in my life that I wish God would change, but until he does, I know that he's gonna actually use them to bring strength. He's gonna use those things to help me grow. And, and I think the picture is a little bit like if you, uh, if you know anything about sword making, which I'm assuming we're all on the same page about. <laughs> I also am not a master of the craft. What I do know is when you make a sword, you have something called an anvil. And the anvil is like this heavy piece of metal. It's what Roadrunner drops on the dude in, in the old comic. It's this piece of metal that, that they put the metal against, and then the, the metalsmith will smack his hammer on it to shape and to forge the sword into how he wants it to be. He uses it to create something. Because the thing is, if you just put your sword on the ground and you hit it with the hammer, if there's nothing hard for the hammer to hit against, you're not actually able to form the metal. And I think the same way God actually can use the things in our life, the tough things, the things that we don't like, the things that we're uncomfortable, to actually shape us and to create us into who He wants us to be. He can use that to bring growth. And I think sometimes I've been guilty of praying, God, would you remove the anvil? Where God's saying, I'm actually trying to use that thing. I didn't cause that thing, but I want to use that thing to make you stronger, to make you more, to build your character, to form you into the kind of person that can live the kind of life that you never expected you could be. And man, I can tell you, I have been guilty of praying, God, would you remove the anvil? And I think it's important to note in there that Paul says, it's something that Satan gave to you. It's something the enemy put there. It wasn't that God gave me this awful thing. But what God does say, like we were singing in that song, what the, in the enemy intended for evil, you can turn for good, God. That thing that happened to me, that thing that I did, that thing that that person said about me, that flaw within my character, God, you can actually use it to shape me and to form me. So I want to encourage us tonight, if we want to choose calling over comfort, we've got to remember that choosing calling is actually going to help us to grow, whereas choosing comfort will always stunt our growth. Romans 5, 3 to 5 puts it like this, not only, we not only so, but we also glory in our suffering because we know that suffering produces perseverance. And can I just say, that's a weird start to a verse, right? We glory in our sufferings. It's like, Paul, bit of a, bit of a downer there, man. We glory in our sufferings. But then he goes on and says, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. And perseverance, character. And character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. I love this, that, that Paul is recognizing that even when it's tough, as long as I keep call, choosing calling, God can use the things that the enemy wants to hurt me to make me stronger, to form me, to help me to grow in my life. And I remember having this revelation as I was reading this in, in my scripture and, 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 and trying to apply it to my life of, I mean, why am I despising my struggles when it's actually really a chance for God's strength to prevail? It's actually a chance for God's strength to prevail. So choosing calling or comfort, 
Comfort's not always comfortable. Comfort stunts growth. Calling creates character. Comfort is about now. Calling is about legacy. Comfort is about right now what feels good. Comfort is about right now what feels good. Calling is about choosing something that's going to enable you to leave a legacy. It's, it's about choosing something that will live on beyond your life. Making a difference that's not just about me actually having an impact bigger than yourself. What kind of life do you want to live? Do you want to live the life? What, what, do you want, what do you want your tombstone to say? Here lies Bill, who ate cheesels and played Fortnite. And he got some sweet chicken dinners on PUBG. Or do you want to live the kind of life? <laughs> do people play PUBG? I don't know. Uh, no, not anymore. Okay, sorry. Uh, Fortnite and uh, 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 Royales, or uh, whatever they are. Uh, got me some sick battle royales, bro. Um, or do you actually want your tombstone? <laughs> Everyone's like, what? Do you, do you want your tombstone to read something like, here lies such and such, who lived a life that was greater than themselves? who humbly followed after what God had for them, who squeezed every ounce of juice out of life, who lived a life to the max and left the world a greater place. I've heard it said that, it, it, that there's a quote that uh, Josh Staines put me onto this week. I told him I'd give him credit. But it says, they say the real hell is when the person you are meets the person that you could have been. The real hell is when the person that you are meets the person that you could have been. And I don't know about you, I don't want that experience. I want to live a life that's to the full. I want to live a life that makes a difference. I want to live a life that leaves the world a better place. That's the kind of life that I want to live. There is unlimited potential within you. There is unlimited potential. God's power in you it is unlimited potential for you to make a difference I would hate to look back and think, I wish I had done more. I wish there's so much more I could have done. So comfort is about now. Calling is about legacy. Final thing we need to consider is that comfort is choosing my strength. Calling is choosing God's strength. If I'm going to choose comfort, it's saying, I can do this. This is what's comfortable to me. This is what I feel like. I'm going to do it this way because it feels good. When you choose calling, it's actually saying, God, I'm going to rely on your power because this is too big for me because I can't do this on my own because, God, I know the plans you have for me. Big plans. I know that with your power working through me, I can do immeasurably more than all I hope, ask, or imagine. And if I'm going to achieve that, it can't be on me. I love what it says in 1 Thessalonians 5.24. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. The one who calls you is faithful. And who will do it? And he will do it. If I'm choosing calling, it's got to be on God. The, the strength is on God. It's not about me trying harder, straining harder. Of course I want to grow, but at the end of the day, the results are on Jesus. The results are on God's power. He actually has the responsibility to make it happen. You won't be able to do what God has called you to in your own strength. You won't be able to do it. And I love what Matthew 6, 31 to 33 says. So don't worry about, don't worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all of these things will be given to you as well. It's saying here, hang on, if you want to live a called life, don't worry about achieving all that stuff for yourself. Worry about seeking first God. And then did you see what happened there? Don't chase after the things that the pagans run after or people, people who don't have the same faith as you, people who don't uh, follow Jesus. Don't run after the things that the world is running after. Seek first Jesus and then he will give you these things also. What things? The things that the world is chasing after the things that you need. It's an amazing blessing of as I choose calling over comfort, that actually I don't miss out. Actually, he fulfills those desires that are deep in my soul. And all of a sudden, the pressure is off that it's not on me to make that happen. 
It's actually on God to make that happen. The responsibility is on Him. I just have to be obedient. And and if I can just wrap up with the thought of that the key to actually choosing called, to live called, and, and hopefully by this point, you want to live a called life. The key to doing that is humility. The key to living called is humility. It is humbling yourself. Ephesians 4 says it like this. As a prisoner of the Lord, I plead with you to walk holy in a way that is suitable to your high rank given to you in your divine calling. With tender humility and quiet patience, always demonstrate gentleness and generous love towards one another, especially those, of you, especially those who may try your patience. You know, when we put an end to self-rule, when we put an end to making decisions based on what I perceive is best for me, that's where we can actually live cold. We can, we can only live cold if we're willing to surrender our right to choose our way to do what's comfortable, to surrender and say, Jesus, I'm actually going to seek you first. Jesus, I actually want to know what you have to say about this. And that takes humility. It takes humility. You've got to be humble to be able to say to God, God, I want all these things, but I want them your way. I want that stuff to happen. And I'd love it to happen now. But your will be done, God, not mine. God, I'm going to choose you. I'm going to choose your timing. I'm going to choose to seek first you. And I think that's what it looks like. It's as simple as coming to Jesus first, seeking first, humbling ourselves coming to Jesus, saying, I want to live cold. I don't want to just live comfortable. I don't want to just live in my comfort zone. I want to live that life to the full that you're calling me to, Jesus. So when it comes to my money, before I just go and spend it on what I want and spend it how I want and spend it on making my life comfortable, I'm actually kind of come to it and say, Jesus, how do I seek you? Jesus, I want to put you first in my finance. Jesus, I don't want to just create wealth to make myself comfortable. I want to use what I have to make the world a better place. It looks like, you know, when I'm stepping into relationships, you know, maybe for single people, as you're stepping towards relationships, Instead of just going, this feels good, this, feels, this makes me feel comfortable, this person makes me feel great. It's actually saying, Jesus, I, I want to honor you with this. I want to live cold. I don't want to just live where it's, com- where it's comfortable. I'm actually, Jesus, I want to involve you in this decision. I don't want this just to be what I feel like. I want it to be you. When it comes to our workplace, when it comes to even looking at what our future is, you know, have you... Have you prayed about it? Have you, have you really sought Jesus first? Or are you just doing what you think is good and what you think will be good and, and what you think will be fun and what you think will be comfortable? Or are you actually coming to God and saying, God, I want to live cold. I don't want to just follow the path that's straight in front of me. I want to call, follow the path that you've called me to because that's where I know the provision is. That's where I know the fulfillment is. That's where I know the legacy is. It's on the path that you have called me to, not on the path that just lays in front of me. So are you willing to surrender that stuff? Surrender the, the right to just choose what makes you feel good in order to live a life that's called of a life that's comfortable. It comes through humility. It comes through Jesus first. So I've got a couple of questions as we wrap up. So for you, do you have a lifestyle of choosing calling or a lifestyle of choosing comfort? Because let's be real, sometimes we make the wrong decision. Sometimes we just choose what's in front of us and and that's what happened. But if, if, you, if you honestly look at your life, are you, are you choosing consistently to live cold or are you choosing consistently what's comfortable? Maybe look back over the last couple of decisions you've made. How involved was God in those decisions? And how much was it just this is what feels good? This is what feels right? Are you distracted by the anvil or are you embracing growth? I think that 
what the enemy wants to do and maybe what he was trying to do with Paul where it's like he's got this thorn in his side. It's like he's just trying to distract him from living cold. It's like there's this challenge that goes on and sometimes stuff happens in our life and it's like it just draws all of our attention. It just sucks, it, sucks us in to that and we, we lose focus on what God's doing. And I just have the feeling that maybe there's some people here tonight, there's just there's something in your life that I'm not saying you should stop praying about it. I'm not, st- I'm not saying you should not believe to be healed by, of, of that thing. I'm not saying you should stop believing for breakthrough. I'm just saying don't let it steal all your focus from living called. Decide to live called and let Jesus heal you on the way. Decide to live a great big life following Jesus, seeking Jesus. Believe that he's going to create character through that thing, that you're going to grow through it, and that you are going to find that on the other side. But don't be distracted by the anvil. Do you want to live a life that leaves a legacy? Like if we're honest, is that the kind of life that you want to live? And can I challenge you to this evening, make a decision. I want to live a life that's greater than myself. And I guess what underpins this all, are you embracing humility? Humility can be kind of a a hard concept to grasp, but I think that's the the simplest way you can put it is just to seek Jesus first and to trust Him. That's what humility looks like. Trusting His plan over my plan. Trusting that His rock and a hard place decision is going to be the right decision. Even though it might not be easy in the moment, that it's actually going to help me to live and empower me to live the life that He's calling me to live. So calling versus comfort. Are you going to live a life where you choose calling? Or are you going to live where you choose comfort? You can choose one but you probably can't have both. And can I just encourage you that a life of calling is so, so worthwhile. So worthwhile. The best decision you will make is to keep choosing a life where I am called, where now it's in God's strength, it's not in my strength, where now I'm actually growing, I'm actually becoming the kind of person I wish that I could be. Now I know that it's not just in my hands to make it happen. I'm living called. Hey, why don't we stand together this evening? I'd love to to pray with us. love to pray with us. And why don't we just close our eyes? And I guess what I want to do this evening is invite you to make a decision right now in this moment to choose calling over comfort. And can I just tell you, I think that as we choose calling, that's where we experience God's power. When I actually choose that I'm not just going to live with what's comfortable, I'm going to step out in faith. I'm going to choose to live called not choose to live comfortable. So right now, if that's you, if, if that's you and that's the desire of your heart, I want to live a cold life, would you just raise your hand right where you are? I'd love to pray with you. I'm sure that's a heap of people here. There's, if that's you, you're like, that's me. I want to live cold. I don't want to just live comfortable. I want to live cold, not just comfortable. Right over this place. Put your hand up if that's you. Heaps of people. Great. Jesus, we just thank you that you've got a, an amazing plan for our life, that you want to help us and empower us to live a life that makes a difference, a life of legacy. And Jesus, I just pray that you'd give us wisdom and strength to make decisions that honor you, that honor your plan, that lead us, that to lead us into a life that is worthy of the call that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. And just as we keep our eyes closed, maybe you're here this evening and you've never made a decision to follow Jesus. Can I just say... Jesus is calling you right now. He's calling you to a life beyond what you could ever imagine. He's called, Jesus called first before we respond to that. And what I want to make you, what I want to encourage you with is to make a decision to choose calling over comfort, to maybe get a little bit uncomfortable in this moment and make a decision to follow Jesus. It's the best decision that you'll ever make. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get you to raise your hand when I count to three. I'd love to pray with you if that's you. But if you're here this evening and you're saying, that's me, I want to make a decision to go on a journey of following Jesus, of of just taking a step towards Him. I might not understand it all, but man, there's just something, there's something here tonight and I need to know more of 
about it. If that's you, would you just raise your hand on three? One, two, three. Just stick your hand up. Yep, see those hands? It's awesome. So good. Anyone else here, you're saying, that's me. I want to make a decision to go on a journey of following Jesus. Awesome. Well, Jesus, I just thank you for these people responding to you. I thank you that you love them so much. I thank you that you have an incredible plan for their life. I thank you that what you're calling them to is a massive future, God. I thank you for your love and your grace. I pray they'd leave here with a fresh sense of confidence and peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, why don't we encourage those people? That's awesome. And hey, if you maybe even you didn't raise your hand, but that's the decision that you'd like to make, I'm going to invite James and Jordy, and they're going to tell you what you can do next if that is you.